Dominguez. March 23rd, 2019. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Dominguez. <laughs> Let me do that date again. March 23rd, 2020. 2K20, baby. So, we're about to go live. And right when I clicked shoot live instead of just record, I got an... A notification that says I do not have a thousand subscribers therefore I cannot do a live video so I'm gonna have to go and talk to a thousand friends and get a thousand subscribers so you need to also subscribe so it does less of Dominguez's work um, so in certain in, I'm, unfortunately I, I don't think I'll be able to go live uh, for now I'm gonna have to keep doing these videos as you can see, I'm in my backyard, live at the Dominguez house. Um, I've got my desk somewhat set up to where my desk would have looked like in my classroom. I have my computer on the left, my speaker for music, uh, my skulls for bad luck, and uh, this is usually where I keep kids' assignments, right? Um, personal finance and Mexican American studies. So I try to keep things normal. Um, I'm quite unsure how this is going to turn out. <laughs> it's a new journey, so let's go to it. Well, this video is going to be for both classes. There's not going to be many videos that are going to be for both classes. And by both classes, I mean personal finance literacy and Mexican American studies. Most of the videos will be specific to your content. However, since this is the first day of school, I'm going to go over some of the basic rules of my class, um, the outline of what the class looks like, and the structure of my class, and then the assignments that all classes have, because I think it's important for every student. So. Those of you who are new, again, my name is Mr. Dominguez, D-O-M-I-N-G-U-E-Z. And those of you who are coming back, welcome. And I have a separate video for those who are returning in their classrooms with a special hello. Okay, so Mr. Dominguez is uh, the... Well, I am Mr. Dominguez, and let me give you a little background about myself. I'm from uh, the west side of San Antonio. Usually right now is when a student in the classroom will say, What's that? And I'll have to correct him and say, You're not from there. Don't do it. Or they'll try and hold up the west side sign, and they're doing it wrong secretly. The west side of San Antonio is historically poor. It's very impoverished. It is, in fact, it is, according to communities and schools, the eighth poorest school district in America. That is Edgewood Independent School District. I'm from Edgewood. I grew up there. I even taught there. So I know all about the West Side. And I'm talking real West. Not, you know, uh, Ingram Park Mall, Sea World. That's not West. I'm talking Highway 90, General McMullen, Casterville Road, Guadalupe Street. That is, to me, the west side. I went to John F. Kennedy High School. I went to Brentwood Middle School. Real west. Why am I here on YouTube? Well, I care. Apparently not enough to have the YouTube live, but I do care. Uh, I, if you're wondering what I'm, I just have some bullet points I'm going over so I don't remember and I don't ramble on as I did in the special hello. Um, I care because some of you have never had me before. And you may not believe me right away. Some of you have probably had me in the past. Some of you have had friends who have had my course, or some of you have heard of me and usually you're going to get described as someone who's straightforward, 
someone who is um, caring, but someone who is very direct with you. But I do want to go back to caring. I do care about all of my students, and I will go in bad for you 100% of the time, even with admin names. However, my class is very straightforward and very rough. I, I say things, and I'm not going to be those teachers who's going to call you, want to hug, and you know, I'm going to be the kind of teacher who's like, this is what it is, if you like it, oh well, if you don't, oh well, that's life. I chose a YouTube channel because I feel like I can connect with my students, connect, I guess, uh, with who I am. You get to see who Mr. Dominguez, the character who teaches at Jackson High School is. And you get to see me for who I am. And I wanted to go live because I didn't want to do edited videos with a bunch of editing in it that doesn't show the true me. I make mistakes in life, as you will in life, and I think that's important to show. The layout of the class. Actually, you know what? First, let me go to class rules. Okay, I have them written down. No, you know what? I, I will go with uh, class rules. Okay, I have five simple rules. It's easy. Respect. You need to show it before I will give it. You are the kid, I'm the adult. You need to respect everyone in the class. And I know we're not sitting in a classroom where everybody's you know, next to you. We're online. You're going to be commenting on people's comments. Or you're going to be commenting on people's material that they submit on Google Classroom. You need to be respectful because I will not put up with disrespect. Two, no cell phones. Um, uh, yeah. Remember the time that that was a rule in classrooms at, 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 when, when we were in classrooms? You couldn't have your cell phone out? Well, I was one of those teachers, so. Three, you need to do your work and you need to turn it in. I do have due date. You have an assignment that I'm going to give you today. It will be due Wednesday at 8 in the morning. You also have another video on Wednesday that will be due Friday. Don't fall behind. This isn't the time to slack. This isn't the time to kid around and goof off and play the uh, Call of Duty or Minecrafter or whatever other games, little kid games you play. This isn't the time. Get to work. You need to behave. You know how to behave online. You know how to behave in the classroom. So I need to. Sh I need you to show that when we're working and when we're doing group projects and while we're even just giving you assignments and you're going to turn that in. You need to know how to control yourself and you need to know how to turn in the work on time. So this goes back to turning in the work. You need to know how to behave as a student. Some of you are seniors. You've been in school 14 years. Right? And I know you're thinking, if I'm in 12th grade, how am I in school 14 years? You went to kindergarten. We didn't count that as a grade. You went to pre-K. Some of you are in pre-K SA. Some of you are in pre-K 4. Some of you are in pre-K 2. And whatever. You've been in school for about 12 to 14 years. Some of you 16 years. Some of you a little bit more. You know what it's like to be a student. You know how to be successful. I don't need to hold your hand. You're 18 grow up. And the last thing we need to look at is language. Because you're going to be submitting stuff online, you're going to be commenting on people's posts, you need to know what language is appropriate. So first off, anything offensive is not appropriate. Your typical curse words are not allowed, but there are three words I do not allow. Number one, the n-word. Hard R, G, A. It ain't allowed in my class. Some of you used it in the hallways a little too much. Doesn't matter who you are, what you are, how you identify, you're not allowed to use it in this class. Second word is the F word, the obvious one, but the one that refers to a derogatory word for gay people, right? 
ends with a G or a T, it's not allowed. And the last one is the R word. Now that one is a little tricky, and I am going to tell you what it is. It is the one for, that is a derogatory word for people with a mental and physical disability, such as retard and retarded. You will not be using those words. The reason why I said them, simple. I understand that sometimes that might be a harder word to try and figure out, so I went ahead and told you. You're not going to be using that, those words in my class, ever. There's no need to use any of those words, especially the R word, when there are plenty of people in this, in this country and in this world who are trying to be a normal citizen only for you to tear them down by referring to them as stupid. Not going to happen. I understand your friends act dumb and you want to put them down. Put them down without referring to people with a disability. Okay, this is going decent. Okay, so the layout of the class. Um, every day, I'm going to say my name. Dominguez! I'm going to yell it. And it's actually probably not as loud here because we're not in a confined space. I could be louder, but I'd rather not. I'm going to say the date. Today's date is March 23rd, 2020. 2K, 20. That is essentially the beginning of the class. After that, we will have a warm-up. Uh, we will not have the warm-up today. And while we're doing the warm-up, we will be listening to music. Today's music, well, every, every week, I have a different album that we listen to. And every day we would have listened to five, I mean, essentially, every week we would have listened to five songs. One song for each day. Now, today's song isn't gonna play, and I have it set up so it can play. However, we're gonna go skip past the warm-up part, so that way we can go ahead and talk about the rest of how this class is gonna work. Usually, it would start off with a warm-up, but not today. However, Album of the Week is going to be for my personal record collection. My phone is recording this, so I cannot see, even if I'm in the shot, right? This could be, you know, recording over here. You could be looking at my, my neighbor's, uh, well, actually, this is my fence, because I built. Uh, you could be looking at the fence with my neighbor's shed in the back. You, it could be way too high. I am kind of short. So, we'll see how this looks. Um, today's album is going to be from Youth of the Day, and it is titled... We're not in this alone. This is their last album. If I could be wrong, I think it was 1988 when Youth Today broke up and they kind of formed Shelter. Um, I'm going to put this album over there on that table only because the ground is saturated with tons and tons of water. It somewhat floods in my backyard and I don't want my record to get wet. Even though it is in this case, water is going to seep in and it's gonna get wet, and then it'll damage the record. In fact, with the humidity, it shouldn't be out here too long. So I'll be right back. Okay. So, after the warm-up, we do the lookout. Now the lookout is going to be on your Google Docs. No. I'm gonna incorporate into Google Docs into Google Classroom. I'm not sure how to upload the lookout. It's a single page and the page tells you it's exactly what it is. It's a lookout. It tells you exactly what we're gonna do for the day. So there's gonna say students will complete the warm-up, students will complete the notes, students will do this assignment or this activity, students will do this group work, students will have a test. And so every day the lookout will tell you what to look forward to. Every day the lookout is updated. So there's never an, a time where you're thinking, oh my God, I didn't know there was a test tomorrow. He never told us, that's not true. That's not my class. It might be in your other classes, not mine. Every day the lookout is updated. After the lookout, we do a picture of the day. I have uploaded your picture of the day already. Look at that, picture of the day before the lookout. Could care less, but the picture of the day is a picture, and you can probably go and click on it in your classroom, Google Classroom folder, and it is, I'm looking it up right now, it is a picture of me and my wife, as you can see, that's her right next to me, and we are on screen with my friend Gino and Jenny. Um, they are a married couple in El Paso, he's actually, and I'm very excited for this, 
he just got his uh, PhD. He just was accepted. Uh, they accepted his uh, doctoral research. They didn't. He wouldn't be getting the degree. He's going to graduate with his PhD. Unfortunately, due to the virus, um, we're not in school. And so if we're not in school, his graduation was canceled. Uh, I don't know what our graduation status is. I'm not going to make calls on that. But his school at UTEP, because they graduate much earlier than high schools would, they went ahead and canceled his graduation. He's getting his PhD, so that's a pretty big deal. I'm a little bummed for him, but when all this passes over, I'm going to celebrate with him. I don't know what we'll do. Maybe I'll go to El Paso. Oh, sorry. Him and his wife are in El Paso. He's uh, graduating from the University of Texas, El Paso. Very similar to UTSA, but U UTEP over there. He will be getting his degree in history. So a doctorate in history. So that is us. We were playing a board game, scrap categories. We were playing categories. And there's a little timer there because it's time. you got to write down a bunch of adjectives that you better remember exactly what the rules are. So that's what we were doing. So even though we're continuing this practice of social distancing, my wife and I, and he and his wife, decided to uh, do a live Instagram video. Uh, we did a call and we went ahead and we played games. So remember, you don't have to just stay inside bored by yourself. You can go ahead and video call people, as most of you probably already have done. Uh, my email address is mdominguez at Jetson ISD. M as in Mr. M. Dominguez, D O M, again, M as in Mr. I N N as in no, G U E, E as in excellent, Z as in Z, at jetsonisd.org. Again, my email is mdominguez at jetsonisd.org. Feel free to email me anytime. I will reply to you right when you send that email. Uh, I will respond to you at the most convenient time for me. So let's get into the next one. I decided to use Google Voice. My Google Voice is not my phone number. It is not my personal cell phone. It is a free number associated with a Google account I created, Dominguez Does, which I'll talk about the YouTube video in a second, which is what you're watching this time. This number is not associated with my cell phone, personal cell phone number. So you won't know what my personal cell phone number is. My Google Voice number is going to be used as my business contact information for you, the students, to get in contact with me. That number is 210... I wrote it down because I, I forgot it. 210-802-2100. That is dos diez ocho cero dos dos uno sesenta uno two one zero eight zero two two one six one. So now let's talk about how to contact me. We need to remember that even though we are social distancing and you're going to be very comfortable watching these videos, probably in your bed or in your kitchen. Most of you probably haven't brushed your teeth yet. You haven't done your hair or showered in a few days. You're going to be very comfortable at home. However, I'm at my house and I'm comfortable. But, this is how I dress comfortably, by the way. Shirt and tie, every day. I will not allow you to take advantage of that comfortableness. You will need to remain professional. My hours for you to call me are going to be from 12 to five, Monday through Friday. The reason why is I'm going to use the same hours I would have at school, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Now, if you're thinking, wait a minute, Mr. Dominguez, we didn't go to school from 12 to 5. We went to school from 8 to 5. I understand. However, from 8 to 9, I'm setting this table up. I'm setting up the links. I thought I was setting up a YouTube live account. I'm going to have to figure out how to do that and get around it. Maybe I can use Zoom. Um, Zoom is a, a video conference call with multiple people. I'll probably be able to do that. You will use 
my phone to only call from 12 to 5 because 8 to 9 I'm setting this up. 9 to 10 I'm doing a video, it was supposed to be live, for my Mexican American Studies course. From 10 to 11 I'm going to be doing a video for my personal finance literacy course. And I know most of you probably don't know this, but we have meetings throughout the day. The teachers and admin do. My meeting for my history department is from 11 to 12. So, this is why I'm having you call from 12 to 5. Because 8 to 9, set up. 9 to 10, MOS. 10 to 11, PFL. 11 to 12, history department. After that, you may call me. If you call, I will not answer any other time, including late at night. You can call me at 11 o'clock, 11.30. I'm not going to answer. And the first time, I won't mind because I'll think I'm not going to answer. After that will be an issue. And if my number is an issue, we will have a conference call with me, you, your parents, and an admin. How I try to be reasonable with my communication and you took advantage of it. So don't call me past 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Unlike that, you can email me whenever you want. Because an email isn't going to alert my phone in the middle of the night. I do check my email throughout the day and sometimes at night. So actually, every night. My email is, again, mdominguez at Judson ISD. I will check that. If you send an email at 2 in the morning, don't expect for me to return it at 2 in the morning. I read those when I wake up at 5 in the morning. And then I will email a response to you. Remember, I understand you're being comfortable at your house, but we need to remember we need to stay professional. And those hours are 8 to 5. You wouldn't want your manager or your boss calling you at 3 in the morning because they're up playing Call of Duty, eating ramen, and wanting to ask you a personal question because that's not appropriate. That is not professional. So, let's get into the video. Let's get into the work. So the video today is for both classes. Unfortunately, it's not a live, which I was expecting to do a live video, but it is still the video. This online is new for me, it's online new for teachers, it's online for most of you. Some of you may have had online courses where it's a program like Ingenuity that we use at night school. This is different. All your work is going to be turned into the appropriate Google Classroom. I set up different classrooms for you. If a few of you have asked me which class are you supposed to be in because your counselor has not gotten back to you. Your counselor should have contacted you and have probably contacted your parents. You might want to ask your parents. But I understand you might have been told you're in Dominguez's personal finance class, but they didn't tell you an exact period. So I'm going to text you, each and every one of you, which class you will be in. I will also be calling you if you would like for me to call you when I email your student, I, your student classroom your student Google Classroom, respond to that email with which phone you would prefer for me to call. I've called every single parent that I have for the fourth nine weeks. Unfortunately, there's quite a few of you I have not been able to get in contact with. Parents either didn't answer, voicemail wasn't set up, voicemail isn't connected, cell phone isn't connected, wrong number, Oh, this is their aunt. I'll get in contact with them. my sister. I guess she'll tell the student. So there's plenty of reasons why some of you may not even know about these videos. So I'm going to have ask you if you can respond with an email if you know that your number is no longer connected or isn't associated with the Judson ID account to go ahead and send me the number you want me to contact you with. All work are going to be turned in on Google Classroom. All work assignments will be due either Wednesday or Friday. I'm a reasonable man. I understand we have issues, right? We're in our house, kind of bored for most of the day. Those of you who know me know I like to move around, and sitting down is, is very tedious to me. So this is new. 
I understand some of you are working full time at your jobs because money's low at home and this is an opportunity for you to work full time. So you're working full time and you're also doing these classes online. And I get it. I had a full time job at 15. I've been working since and I've always had a full time job. So I understand. But you also have to make sure that you get your work turned in. Wednesdays at 8 a.m. Because I know some of you think you work better at 2 in the morning. So you sleep all day and you're up at night and so you think you work better when really it's just delirium. So I'm going to give you the assignments Monday. It'll be due Wednesday. I'm going to record another video, hopefully live, maybe not this week. And then that will be recorded Wednesday and that assignment will be due Friday. Every single day that you turn in an assignment late, it is 10 points off. For example, your assignment that's coming up that I'm going to talk about is due Wednesday. And if you take off Wednesday and turn it in Thursday, it's minus 10. It doesn't mean you got a 90. It means you would have got whatever grade you would have gotten minus 10 points from that. So if you turn in half the assignment, well, that's not a 90. You're getting a 50 because you did half the work. Minus 10, that would put you at a 40. Don't be the kid who fails online courses. I was a kid who felt an online math course. I wasn't good at math. I was terrible at it. Why would I take it online? I don't know, because I was stupid. And when I took it, I failed, because I didn't do the work, because I felt, oh, this is go at my own pace. I'll just go extra slow. Well, with the time, doesn't change, but my pace did. So instead of me moving at the same pace as the class, I actually, the class moved like this, and I moved like this. So when the class was here and ready to be over, I was only halfway done, so I failed. It was college, we all learned from our mistakes, don't do it. Those of you who are gonna have a hard time turning in assignments through Google Classroom, feel free to do the work, take a picture of the work and email that to me because I know that some people are having a hard time with the internet. You have a phone, most of you have a phone. I know you do because I would take those away from you. So take a picture of your work. For example, let's just say some of these notes are your assignment. Take a picture, snap, snap, email it to me, and it would be the same thing. Just make sure you follow the deadlines because my deadlines will not change. So now let's get to the assignment. And this will be the last part of the video. I understand some of you who have been emailing me say, Mr. Dominguez, there is no video. I know, today's Monday, days when I record the videos. I know you didn't know that, which is why I didn't get back to you. It wasn't that I was ignoring you or trying to ghost you. I was just trying to be clear and instead of getting back to like the eight kids that have been emailing me, I'd rather just do it and say it once so that way you can go and learn from it. So the assignment that all classes will be doing. Well, as you know, there's a virus going around that's affecting the entire world, except North Korea. They've apparently got zero cases. But then again, no one can really get in that country, oh, and you definitely can't leave. So, we'll see. So, as you know, the virus has us at home. I understand you are going through an emotional, a sociological, even a parental, some of you who are parents, change. Some of you are changing with your parents. This is history that is happening. This is unprecedented. We have never had to shut down the schools in this manner, nationwide and even across the world. And most people working from home through the 80s in the 90s, which most of you think y'all are cool, but you're really not 90s. In the early 2000s, the noughties or the oddies, I don't remember which one, the teens, not even the 70s, the 60s, the 50s. And there have been disasters such as hurricanes or um, winter storms that have shut down schools for a week or two, a few weeks, maybe a month or so, but not in this, not in this way not across the nation. It might have hit the Northeast. It might have hit New Orleans. It might have hit Galveston, although that was 1900. So. 
This is shutting down the entire world. This is truly history. If you b believe me, this will be in the history books. When we come back, your kids, your grandkids, hell, those of your brothers and sisters who were, you know, four or five now, they're going to learn from this. They're going to know that this is history. You're going to read our diaries, our notes, our journals, our documentation of what we did and what we were doing while this happened. When we read about World War II, we read about letters in the Holocaust that some people may have kept. We read about the Diary of Anne Frank, which people still deny. And those people are just jerks. We read about historical documents because people were there and they kept record. This is your chance to keep record. Write down your thoughts. Write down your feelings. Write down what you do. And if you're doing nothing and you wake up, at, let's say you wake up late. Let's say you wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning, super late. And you wake up and you make breakfast. And then you watch TV all day and you do nothing with your life. That's a boring story. And I'm going to tell you right now, we don't read about those people in history because we exclude them. So don't be those people that we exclude. Be the people that are interesting. Go and talk about what it's like to be at H-E-B. I was there the other day, and I don't know if y'all can see this. I did a tester video to make sure that, you know, we were able to, I was able to connect to the YouTube channel. And it was when I was in line waiting for toilet paper. I got to H-E-B at 7.30 in the morning, and I was 64th in line. 64th. I didn't get toilet paper. I had to go back the next day. And I got there at 7 o'clock in the morning, and I was 30-something in line. And I thought, man... If you're not here an hour before HB opens, you're not going to get toilet paper. And then they rationed it out to, you could only get one roll or one package. So I got the biggest one, which was like six, right? Six rolls. So I have to go back again. Talk about that. Nobody knows. We've read about the bread lines in the 30s during the Great Depression. We read about the, the shortage of metal, the shortage of food, shortage of clothing. And we will read, about, we'll talk about and read about the shortage of clothing that happened when in Mexican-American studies. So this is history that's going down. Record it. Be a part of it. Don't just sit on the toilet and send memes. Although they are funny. They are funny. But don't just do that. Do something with your life. Document this. What you write down could be in history books in the next few years, in the next decades, the next century. So how are you going to live history? On the couch, watching TV, or doing something with your life? That's what I want you to write a paper on. Two pages, typed, handwritten, however you want. Two pages. How are you doing? What are you doing? Who are you sharing your house with? Maybe you're stranded in Pittsburgh. Maybe you're, you know, at your aunt's house. Maybe you live with just one brother or one sister. That would be nice. Although I lived with my one sister, and, you know, you, you know what I'm, especially you, you. Oh yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. Maybe you have to take care of your four brothers or your three sisters or whoever. I don't know what your responsibilities are. So this is my chance to know you. What are you doing? Because you've had two weeks off, and I know y'all didn't do classwork last week. I know some of you didn't do my spring break work over the week before. So what are you doing? Write it down. Are you going to the park? Are you riding a bicycle? I had to change the flat tire on my bicycle because I haven't ridden that bike in three years. It turns out that tube was bad. So I had to go to a bike store, get a tube, change it. And then I had to remember how to change a bike because I don't change bike tires anymore. I ride motorcycles. So because of that, I had to remember how to do this. YouTube was, fortunately, I was able to remember most of the steps. And YouTube was able to help me connect with, oh, that's the part I was missing. So what are you doing? So let me tell you what Mr. Dominguez has been doing. And those of you who know me know I ride motorcycles. Those of you who don't know me, I ride motorcycles. I work on motorcycles from 8 to 5 every Sunday. That's what I do every Sunday as a job. I teach 8 to, you know, I used to be night school coordinator 7.30 at night. So you're looking at 12-hour days. And then Saturdays I get to take care of the house. Now, I know the grass is getting tall. It's been raining. Can't cut the yard. So... 
Um, this is what I do. So, this virus has affected me. I was sick, didn't have the virus. I just had, uh, what did the doctor say? I didn't even see the doctor because she was busy. They sent me to like a physician. The physician said I had a sinus infection, right? Phlegm, that's about it. Headache. When I was there, I did notice a lot of sick people. And I thought, man, you know, I'm really, I'm really glad that I'm not one of those people who are that sick. I'm, I'm lucky. Because their life is going to be affected much more drastically than mine. I cannot go to my friend's shop anymore on Sundays to work on motorcycles. I can't go to the store to get teleporter because they don't have any, so, you know, I have to wake up early, and I already told you that story. I can't just go to a coffee shop with my friend regular Dave, where regular Dave and I, and I would eat tacos on the weekends and try different coffee shops around San Antonio. We can't do that. Uh, Dave and I can still hang out, because it's just one person instead of ten, with whole ten or less, or ten or fewer. But there's, the shops are closed. Restaurants are closed. Dining is no longer an option. We got rid of it. You can only carry out or take out. So, like my personal life is affected. My professional life is obviously affected. You're watching this class on a YouTube channel. It's definitely affected. I can't be there with my students. In fact, I took a picture the other day. It was uh, like, write a, take a picture of what you missed. There's a video that Mr. Hernandez has shared. I think it's on the fuel, the rocket fuel online. I, it's, a, it's a Twitter thing or a talk tick thing. And I wrote, I miss my students. And the honest truth is I do. I miss riding my motorcycle. Now I can still ride, but it's been raining this entire time we've been locked down. I miss doing things with my friends, going on motorcycle trips. I miss hanging out with my friends, having a barbecue on a Saturday or a Sunday and having all my friends over. So my life has been affected. I just, I want things back to normal as I'm sure you do. And I wanna be able to go out and see the world. And those of you who know me or who have had my class before, you know I'm always out and about. I am sometimes a type A, but mostly not a type A. I like to be talking with people, socializing with my friends, hanging out. I do enjoy time alone, but this has been hard. And some of you are like me. It's, it's probably been harder on you. So now you know a little of what I've done. I want you to know what you have done. So go ahead, take two pages, write it or type it. How has this virus really affected you? What are you going through? What are you feeling? How are you feeling? What is your family like? Did they lose jobs? My friends, not all of my friends are teachers. In fact, very few of them are teachers. We still have our jobs for now. My friends have lost their jobs. Some of them are bartenders. Some of them are tattoo artists. Some, some of them are waiters. And they've had to close their shops or the restaurant closed down. That sucks. They're without a job and they have no money. You only have so much money you can save. And those of you in personal finance, you'll know that you save 20% of your check. Or you will learn. So how much money is that going to last? So they have to find new jobs. But it's not like one tattoo artist lost a job, or one bartender, or one server at a restaurant. Everybody across the city, across the state, across the country is losing their jobs. So the demand for jobs is going to go down, but the market's going to go up. Which I think I got that wrong. I'll edit it later. I probably won't. My friends are doctors. I have a friend who's a doctor and a friend who's a, uh, another doctor, a specialist. They're both being pulled for the emergency rooms. So whatever they were doing before doesn't exist. My friend Javi's in North Carolina. He's in, he's working from home. He's a doctor, he's a, you know what? I thought he was a physician's assistant and I, he didn't say what he was. He's something in the admin field. 
He's working from home. He's no longer in the doctor's office. Other friends who are, you know, getting their PhD, my friend Chino, as I told you earlier, he had his graduation canceled. Other friends who are in schools are going online. I keep in touch with students who have graduated. They're going online. So some of them got kicked out of the dorms. You know, times have changed. I want to know what's going on with you. And I'm going to end it there. That is due Wednesday at 8 in the morning. Turn it in whenever. You can, once you turn it in, especially on Google Classroom, you can go back and edit it if you've already turned it in. I know a few of you, quite a few of you have. I'm looking at seven of you so far. And I will see you Wednesday. Have a good day. Have a good day. Have a good day.